there's a thread. The kids on the underground started this, and I appreciated it, but they were talking about the tryouts that they used to have for the lion's den. Now, I hope you guys even know what the lion's den is, and I realize I'm, I'm, I'm showing my fandom, but I do go back to 1993. And the lion's den was one of the most respected, and it was one of the only gyms where you could train mixed martial arts. And that was the Ken Shamrock Academy. And Ken Shamrock was real close with his uh, father, Bob. And I've never been completely clear if this was Bob's thing or if it was Bob and Ken together or if Ken took it, but Bob uh, overlooked it. And I even read a book on it called The Lion's Den. And it was the only MMA book I had ever seen at that time. And it was so exciting to have that book. I yearned for mixed martial arts. And we didn't know where we could go. There were six UFCs a year. Pay-per-view was a very different deal. You, you wouldn't even know when it happened. And you wouldn't know because the internet wasn't around. So you go check every few months. Blockbuster videos, what we did here in Oregon. And they'd have the VHS. And you'd see and you'd saw who entered. And you'd hurry home and you would go watch. But you'd have no idea. It was fresh news to you. It's just a, a bit of a different world. I can remember I was out of college. It was called MMA Weekly. Ryan Bennett, rest his soul. Ryan Bennett started MMA Weekly and his deal, his contract with the audience is I will bring you something MMA every single day. So every morning when you got up with your cut, 7 a.m., you could go to MMA Weekly and there would be an article. Every day. They brought you one on Monday and on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, every single day. and that, But that was shocking back then. So the sport really changed, and the sport really grew. And what the kids on the underground were talking about is, can you today, and that's talking about everybody's got a camera on their phone. They're talking about everybody's got social media. They're talking about, oh, the uh, word's going to get out, and videos are going to get out, and still photos are going to get out. Can you? break someone into the business the way they used to do at the lion's den. And some people on the on the underground call it, said it was like a gang jump in. I could see the comparison. I could see the comparison. I, I had a couple of friends that went down and went through the tryout process. And I, I would be able to relate. I went through the WCW, it was called the power plant, for professional wrestling. But I went through that one summer and it was similar to the things I hear about the lion's den. And the lion's den, as brutal as it was, or even the w, uh, the WCW that I went through, as brutal as it was, it was just a conditioning thing. I mean, at the end of the day, no matter how they were talking, no matter what threats you have, no matter what hand-to-hand -hand combat, no matter who was coming at you or what you were doing, it was just to test your mettle from a conditioning standpoint. And that's all a tough guy is, right? If you're trying to figure out who a tough guy is amongst the group, you get the guys together, and then you start getting them tired. You start working them. And you will know in order, whoever stopped first is the least tough guy. Whoever stops last is the toughest guy. I mean, that is what it will come down to. So there's the power plant, or it was that lion's den. They were just trying to get you to quit. How many sprints can you do? How many box jumps can you do? How many down and backs can you do? How many pull-ups can you do? How many guys can rotate in on you? How many times until you stop standing up and saying, come on. All you got to do is not quit. All you've got to do is move forward, at least to the WCW when I went through it, and at least when my friend Marcus Lewis went through it at the Lion's Den and based on the book that I read called The Lion's Den. So it's very interesting. Very different times. Because you could see the real need for that. At one point, you get some tough guys. You get these guys. You guys say, I'm going to go and be a cage fighter. Well, how do you know? There wasn't training for it back then. There were six guys in the United States of America that were Gracie certified black belts. That was in 1995. In 1995, there was only six Hickson Gracie black belts in the country. So it's not a matter of some guy's going to walk in your gym and then he's going to inform you that I've won this and I've done that and this is going to translate. It wasn't like that. 
So now you get some guy off the street that's choosing to go into this profession, which is a weird thing to go into. And now you got to find out if he's got the metal to, to even get your time. You got to get him tired. You got to see how he responds. It's not a matter of can he do a thousand squats. It's a matter of if you call for a thousand squats, is he going to try to do a thousand squats or is he going to say my legs can't bend anymore? Great. Either way, we've got our answer. One goes this way and the other goes this way. So it would be, I mean, you you could see where the necessity, right? And, and I got to bring that up because it's not a matter of the technology or even the flawed mindset or even that it's like a gang jumping. It's not a matter of that. It's a matter of today, understanding what we know, somebody can come in without having to do that. You could talk to them about their past and know that they've already done that. They could come in and tell you, I'm the king of the cage champion. They could come in and tell you, I didn't medal, but I made it to Abu Dhabi. They could come in and tell you I was an all-American wrestler. You could start having a little bit different conversation before saying, put your shorts on and I'll meet you in the ring in 20 minutes. It's a little bit different. And I told you guys the story of Cain Velasquez. Now, how much of this story is true? But it's still the story. And it's the story everybody's going with. That Kane's first day goes into the AKA. He tries to get Coach Javier Mendez's attention. Javier's busy with someone else. Kane comes back over to bother him again. The third time, Coach Mendez tells this big kid that he'd never seen before. Go over and kick that bag a thousand times. Then come ask me your question. And so Kane went over and kicked that bag 1,000 times. The next time he came over, Javier stopped what he was doing, and he showed him that attention. So there still is a version of the lion's den. There still is a necessity to know who's willing to actually pay the price. Everybody wants to be a star, but who's willing to sacrifice? There is still a need to know. And would you have to jump them in and would have to be as, as rough and tumble as the lions then listen those stories weren't exaggerated they really did do that what's missing was the badge of honor the fact that those guys wanted to do that and the ones that got in right the ones that got branded they wanted to be there and it was an accomplishment and sure that comes with some embellishment to make all of our stories seem better you do it too and so do they and could you have a tryout today like the Lions did had in the 90s? Yes. But in fairness, there's not quite the same necessity for it.